Good morning, everybody. Spiritual Whistleblower here. Um, another video on narcissistic abuse before I jump right in. Um, of course, you guys know this weekend I have uh, support group meetups in Connecticut and Boston, Massachusetts, Saturday and Sunday. You want to attend, get at me. There's very few seats left. The following weekend, July 30th and July 31st, I'll be in Philly and Washington, D.C. That's next week. You want to attend, there's limited seating due to COVID guidelines. I suggest you get your tickets now because they're running out. August, I'm on the West Coast. August, I'll be in LA, I'll be in Sacramento, I'll be in Seattle, Vegas, and Phoenix. You're on the West Coast and you want to attend one of my support group meetups, email me to get your tickets, all right? Cool. I'm also available for phone coaching. Um, my email's pinned down below. If you're dealing with a narcissist in any capacity, family, friend, foe, lover, whatever, and you need some guidance, get at me. All right, so here we go. We're going to get into this video. <laughs> when the devil can no longer get to you, he will send a narcissist into your life. I'll repeat. When Satan, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, when Satan cannot reach you, he will send a narcissist into your life to wreak havoc and destruction. Are we ready for this conversation? All right, let's go. Now, I know you guys are at various different stages in your healing process. A lot of you guys um, are fresh out of a relationship, whether it's your ex, uh, whether you're breaking free from your toxic parents. A lot of y'all are adults who have lived at home with your narcissistic mother and father, and you're finally breaking free. Whatever your situation is, um, or wherever you are in your healing process. Some of y'all are fresh out. Some of y'all are six, six months out of a relationship. Some of y'all are a couple years out of a relationship and you're still healing. Um, I guess I'm going to speak from my perspective just to give you guys some insight on what happens when you're further down the line in your healing. You're very strong. You're a super empath. You're very knowledgeable. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, why am I so strong? And I simply tell them I've done the work. Um, I've eliminated every last narcissist from my life that could do harm to me. Um, and that's, that's what happens. A lot of people are scared, you know, to isolate themselves or separate from their abuser because of that trauma bond. But that's where you find the healing. When you cut mom and dad off for good, when you cut your family off and you cut all those toxic friendships and your exes off, then you're in this space of isolation. And in your isolation is where you're supposed to get the counseling, the therapy, the self-help. Um, you're supposed to spend lots of time, no dating, no sex, just constant um, self-reflective work, introspective work. Um, work that will help you destroy all the childhood trauma, you know, that you suffered, all the healing that's required. It's called shadow work. How can you do the shadow work or the healing to destroy all the toxic trauma, you know, that you suffered in your childhood if you're constantly interacting with toxic family members, you're still on the phone with your mom and dad, those are your original abusers, they're narcissists. You cannot even begin to do any work on yourself until you completely disconnect with everyone. You can't heal in the very same place that broke you. And I don't think some people are ready to do that work. I've done all that work. That's why I'm strong. But speaking from my perspective and many super empaths who are strong, super empaths do not tolerate any bullshit off of narcs. A super empath is not afraid to destroy a narcissist. We do not run from the narcissist. We will dish the same shit back to the narcissist. When a narcissist throws us some bullshit, we throw it right back, but we throw it 10 times harder. That's what super empaths do. So in this video, what I wanna to explain to y'all is 
When you get to a place of healing and happiness and you're free from any type of energetic cord or anything binding, all the toxic people from your past are gone. Let me tell you how the devil works. <laughs> the devil knows you're in a good place. The devil knows you're close to God. The devil knows spirits are protecting you. The devil knows you have peace and balance in your life, but he's still gonna try you. You understand me? He's still gonna try you. When you are at a place of peace in your life and the devil knows he can't reach you, he will send the narcissist into your life in the form of a friend or a loved one. And this person that comes to you they're going to be so sugar-coated and so sweet and so nice and so, so deceptive. But the devil knows how to send them to you. I told y'all my last relationship, I don't deal with ex-convicts or jailbirds. That's not my style. I made an exception for my ex because like I said, we went to high school together. Here I am far along in my career. I'm successful. I, I'm, you know, he's a broke bum coming out of, of, of prison. And that's not my style. I don't deal with men like that. I know better. But again, I made an exception for him because he's a childhood friend. And never in my wildest dreams would I imagine him putting his hands on me or disrespecting me. But I knew, well, I didn't know then, but I know now Prior to him approaching me, he was a predator studying how he was going to approach me. He had this whole plan, you know, narcissists are predators. And, and they have an agenda for the people that they target. He targeted me. He knew when he came out of prison, he was going to call me up and hunt me down. And I let him in and he, and he assaulted me, he did everything. He bullied, bullied me, broke me down, assaulted me, and not only was it him, but his family. His family also manipulated and played me. You know, it was just a horrible experience that I'm very glad to be free from. But now that I look back, I realize, you know, at that moment when he came into my life, I was in a good place in my life. I was happy, I was touring, I was traveling. Um, I wasn't involved with any boyfriends, no distractions. I was doing me. So now that I look back, I see that it was the devil that used my ex to distract me and throw me off my path because at that time I was doing God's work. The shit that I'm doing right now, traveling the world and helping people, that's what I was doing when my ex came into my life. And the moment I got involved with him, I stopped doing God's work. I stopped living in my purpose and calling because I was too busy draining myself to serve him. I was in the kitchen cooking three times a day for him, giving him three, sex three times a day and, and you know putting my life on hold to help him rebuild his because he's broke, he has nothing. He's fresh out of prison after doing 20 years. He had turned me into his personal slave. I was not allowed to have a social life, no friends. His sister uh, invited me to go out for drinks. He wouldn't even let me go out with his sister. He was super controlling. Then he was putting his hands on me and falsely accusing me of cheating. Totally turned my life inside out. I had turned into somebody I didn't even recognize. And it took me, you know, once I got out of the relationship and I started doing self-reflective work during my healing process, I look back, I'm like, yo, the devil sent that nigga into my life to fuck my shit up. The straight throw me off my purpose. That was the work of Satan because any man, if, if this man was sent to me by God, he would help me excel. He would help me take my business to the next level. He wouldn't be kicking me down about my weight. He wouldn't dare put his hands on me. He wouldn't be breaking me down verbally, mentally. He broke me the fuck down. That is the work of the devil, y'all. 
when you're in a happy space in your life, you got to understand it is critical that you protect your peace, you protect your money, you protect everything you work hard for. You've got to protect it because when I tell you that Satan will send all types of people into your life to infiltrate and throw you off your path and destroy everything you worked hard for. Yeah, it's real. He can't, if the devil can't get to you, he's going to send a narcissist to infiltrate. I'll give you another example. I just had to get rid of a female. I hate that I had to do it, but I, bitch, don't try me. This bitch been coming to all my support group meetups. I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all because I'm very transparent. She started coming to my support group meetups um, last December. You know, trying to make like, you know, her story is my story. She's been through abuse and da, 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 da. And she very, very well may have. I never discredit or downplay anyone's experience with a narcissist, even if they're toxic themselves. But she played the role. Um, what I found out over the last uh, six months is that this woman has been coming to my support group meetups to take notes and study me and leech off of me to build herself up. Sneaky bitch. I put out a children's book in January. <laughs> I'm about to trip y'all out. I put out a children's book in January. She approaches me in what, March or February? It says she, she wants to do a children's book too. Can I help her? She came to me for help. How did you start your book? How do I did it? And I'm cool. I will help anybody. She's not the first person I've helped, you know, start a book. I'll help anybody. It's really not hard to self-publish a book. You can go Google the instructions. It's really simple as fuck. But like, again, she came to me for help. Can you help me? I want to do a children's book. Cool. So I gave her all my resources. I gave her my graphic artist and I showed her where to go, how to set it up, how to get it done, yada, yada, yada. That's just me. I'm never a hater. I help everybody. And you want to know what's funny? She's a school teacher. You're a motherfucking school teacher. And you mean to tell me you don't know how to self-publish a children's book? Don't y'all think something is wrong with that? I'm not a school teacher. Why would you come to me for help? And you work in, you work in a school system. And you mean to fucking tell me you don't know how to publish self-publish a children's book on your own that's off right there but let me keep telling the story then she comes to me oh i want to do a study guide off of your book to teach my students uh, uh you know i want to use your book as a study guide and i i do you want to do this discussion this discussion guide like she wanted to create some sort of study guide off my shit and I said, it sounds cool. You know, let me, you know, let's discuss it. So she wrote up a rough draft and all of that and emailed it to me. I never agreed to anything. We never even discussed the draft. Whatever. Then I started noticing at another support group meetup, I'm dressed really nice. She starts begging me, where do you get your shoes from? I want to buy those shoes. Where'd you get those shoes? She nagged me the whole night about my fucking shoes. And I'm like, yo, bitch, what is wrong with you? I have your phone number. Wait till the fucking event is over. I'll text you the information. She nagged me all night long. Where did you get your shoes? Oh my God, I want your shoes. Then on top of that, at my event, she's sneaking and taking pictures of me. Now, y'all know I've made videos about how narcissistic people like to take pictures of you off guard when you're not looking. If they don't get you while you're asleep, they're going to get you while you're showering in the nude or they're going to catch you off guard when you're not looking. And they take the most unflattering fucking pictures of you. Then they'll show you, look at the picture I took of you. This bitch did this at my party. The first thing I'm thinking like, why would you take pictures of me and I'm not looking? And these are the most ugly, unflattering positions. I'm squatted over, I'm bent and twisted a certain way, my stomach's hanging out. Like, it was like she deliberately did that shit. Then she turned around and posted all the pictures in a group chat for other people to see. 
okay, bitch, here's another red flag. And she doesn't even know I'm stacking red flags against her. She thinks she violated me, but I, I'm, I'm already at the finish line on this bitch. I'm already at the finish line on this bitch. Um, now I'm in London. You guys know I went to London last week for my support group meetup, which was a huge success. While I was in London, do you know this bitch contacted me? The day of my motherfucking, she contacted me the day of my support group, July 10th, all the way from America. And you know what she did? She texted me. You know what the text message said? Well, before she sent me that, her book finally got done and published to Amazon. So she texted me her book four different times. I'm like, why the fuck does she keep texting me the book? I saw it the first fucking time. No message attached, no, hey, here's my book. When you get back to the States, you know, let me know, you know, show some support, da da da. Nothing. She just kept texting the fucking picture. I'm like, bitch, I saw it the first time. But she sent me a text message strategically, very calculated, the very same day of my support group, which was July 10th. You know what the text message said? Can you check check your email? I sent you uh, um, I sent you another draft or da 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 da. She didn't send me a text to congratulate me or to say, "Hey, how's your trip going? I hope you're having a great time. I hope you do well at the support group." Nothing to congratulate me. Nothing, nothing about London whatsoever. Then she tried to play stupid in a text message. She says, "Are you in London?" Bitch, you know good and fucking well. Everybody knows I'm in motherfucking London. Why are you trying to play stupid? Are you in London? Do you mind taking a look at your email and, and see what I sent you? Da-da-da-da. So this bitch was trying to be very strategic, very calculated. She wanted, to, she wanted to distract me and pull my attention off of what I had going on in London, my support group, and put it on her. Selfish bitch. Jealous ass, toxic, selfish ass bitch. That is the work of the devil. See, Satan will use people to come into your life, infiltrate and distract you. And I had to check her. Oh, I got in her ass. Bitch, you know damn well I'm in fucking London, number one. Number two, this shit that you're sending me could have waited till I got back the fuck in the United States. Why is you sending me this shit? You have no respect for fucking boundaries. And check this, y'all, her, her children's book, guess what her children's book is about? Teaching children about boundaries. You motherfucking hypocrite, bitch. How the fuck you write a children's book about boundaries, but here you are behind closed doors, violating all types of boundaries. You have no, as an adult, a grown fucking professional woman, you're violating all type of boundaries. You disrespectful bitch. You hypocrite. That's where I saw in that moment that she was a narcissist because narcissists are inconsistent. What they present to the public eye and what they show people behind closed doors are two different things. You look like a goody fucking two shoes, a good school teacher to the public, you know, putting out a book teaching children about boundaries, but behind closed doors, you're violating boundaries. You're disrespectful. You're a hypocrite. You need to take the own fucking advice you wrote in that children's book and apply it to yourself, bitch, because you don't respect nobody's motherfucking boundaries. Yeah, I saw who she really was behind closed doors. Uh, but I got in her ass. Then after that, I blocked her from texting me further. I said, I'm in London. I'm going to have a beautiful time. Ain't nobody going to fucking take, you know, I, I, I'm not dealing with no one's negative energy. I know she did that shit to be funny because she's jealous and hating and mad that I'm here in London. Then I blocked her on Instagram. You know what the bitch does? She turns right around while I'm in London and she shoots me yet another fucking email when she realizes I blocked her from texting me and I blocked her on Instagram. She violates my boundaries yet again and sends me a fucking email while I'm in London. And I said, you know what, Chanel? Don't respond. Don't respond. You, you know what? Respond to her when you get back to the United States, when you get back from vacation. And that's what I did. When I got back from my vacation, I sent her an email and I said, let me tell you something. Stay the fuck away from me. You're not welcome to come to any more of my future events. 
You violate, I'll call the police. Goodbye. Let me tell y'all something. Satan will use people to get close to you if you're not careful. I know I'm a moving target. Because where I'm at right now, God is using me. I'm doing God's work and the devil does not like it. And I'm woke. I will give people enough rope to hang themselves. You cannot fucking play me or get over on me. I'm very nice. I'm very sweet. I will help people. I will do, I will bend over backwards, but you will not get away with playing me. You will not violate my boundaries. You will not disrespect me. I don't give a fuck. I will let you believe you're getting over on me, you're getting, getting away with shit, and then I will pull the rug from underneath your feet. When Satan cannot get to you, he will send these narcs into your life in the form of friends, family, whatever. He knows how to get to you. These people get close to you, they know how to bond with you, and they be right underneath your nose fucking plotting, y'all. I'm telling y'all, I'm woke. And I'm telling you, as you heal and you get to the other side of your healing and you become woke, it doesn't stop. These people will approach you in every area of your life, whether it's your job, whether it's, you know, your children's school teacher. It's, it's, it's everywhere. You go to the doctor. They're everywhere, y'all. They're going to try you. They can smell your anointing. They know spiritually you have a calling. You have, you're marked. They can smell it on you and they will try you. Keep shutting them down. Keep your discernment high. Keep your eyes open because it's real out in these streets. The devil is mad that you got free from every fucking narcissist that tried to destroy you from your past. So he's going to keep sending new ones into your life to infiltrate. And it's up to you to shut it down immediately. Don't ever let no one violate your boundaries. Don't let no one get away with nothing. The moment someone shows you who they are, get rid of them. I love you guys. Let me finish my walk. Spiritual whistleblower. God bless.